Welcome ladies and gentlemen to my new video where we are going to go over five tips that are going to help you become a better Diana player. Now if you're new to my channel, my name is Lofit. I do educational content, new tips videos, guide videos, and I also stream here on YouTube if you want to check that out. And with all of my videos, I heavily encourage you guys, if you play a lot of Diana yourself, to comment your own tips down below as I am limited in this um, type of format. So with that all out of the way, let's get into the first tip. All right, and jumping into tip number one, I just want to go over something really quick that is revolving around your queue when you are looking to play Diana. And this is um, not going to be too evident for some of the newer players with Diana, particularly the ones that always use the um, the quick cast and never really get a chance to look at the reticule. But what I want to go over is the, her skill shot is a very unique skill shot with, I don't think, anything that has a similar path and kind of explosion point. So how you want to look at this is if you look at the queue and the line um, before the circle, it is very thin compared to the big explosion point on this circle. So it's going to be, um, you're going to hit a lot more cues if you are looking to try and hit people with this big circle right here and less with trying to hit them with um, this kind of line. So it's going to be a lot easier for someone to dodge skinnier sh skill shots as they are to, um, it's going to be a lot harder for them to dodge these really fat ones. So you want to take advantage of the fat part of your skill shot and that is where you want to try and hit them um, with your ability and um, you can always just look to just throw it on top of yourself when you are jumping in. But if you want to hit more cues, always try and abuse that really fat um, kind of explosion that is at the end of the Diana's queue. And that will wrap up tip number one. All right, and getting into tip number two, I just want to talk about a more effective way to use your Q and how the Lunar Rush works and getting the reset if you have a target that is affected by the Crescent Strikes Moonlight debuff ability, this is when you will be able to get a double Lunar Rush off. So a traditional way that a lot of maybe unexperienced Diana players might look to play it out is wait for the Q to hit and then register is like, oh, they have Moonlight Afflicted, let's E dash in. But there is a quicker way that you can get more unexpected damage off and you are able to just pull off extremely quick all-ins without any warning. And that is by throwing your Q. Um, and when you are pretty sure it's going to hit, just throwing your Lunar Rush even in before the Q is going to hit because you are still going to get that reset. As you can tell, um, Diana is reaching that target before the Q is hitting and you are still able to um, get that reset off as you can tell right there i got the there before the Q and the E got off. So just keep in mind that this is going to be a lot more unexpected um, when you are playing Diana. And I want another thing I want to talk about with the E is it has a insanely large range. I mean, look at the range of this dash. It is pretty, um, I, I mean, there are only a few other abilities that have this long of a dash range. So it is pretty much just as long as your Q. Um, so just take advantage of this because a lot of people don't understand the just true range of this. This, uh, lunar rush ability and just getting those quick combos off are going to be a great way to get lane priority push in the lane to the tower and then roaming with your um your just stronger level because you have the access to that solo farm experience and that will wrap up tip number two all right, and getting into tip number three, I want to talk about timing because this is an extremely important concept when you are playing Diana and when you are looking to get these all-in assassinations when you are playing that out. And if you misuse some of your abilities, you can get punished quite heavily. So how I want you guys to start looking at Diana is particularly important is the range. As she is a melee assassin, you want to let them get as close as possible. If you are setting up any sort of bush traps, for example, like this, you want to let them walk until they get as close to you as possible and then spring your trap and then with the ultimate and the pull of your champion the last thing you want to do is get your QE dash in and then do a moonfall right after you have a lunar rush in because they already are going to be on top of you unless you might be able to burst them out with a little bit of damage that you might get you really want to look <clears throat> at this moonfall as a way to kind of chase after they use their ability to dash away. So say this is a, an enemy champion that is like a, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, like a, a champion with a dash mobility and you QE in 
and then you wait for them to use their mobility they dash over this way and then you use your ultimate to bring them back into as this is going to be an additional gap closer you do not want to use all of your gap closers at once unless you think you can instantly burst them out with a maybe a double lunar rush that is going to um, go on them so keep this in mind and then also the other thing i want to talk about with timing is the pale cascade and how strong this shield is and how you want to look to use it if you're pointing against champions that are very bursty and they aren't too strong consistently you want to make sure to have your shield up for when they are looking to do their burst a lot of these burst champs are going to have very telegraph damage and uh, for example something like a fizz that you know a lot of damage is coming when he's going to e drop down and then maybe auto wq and do a big amount of burst so you want to make sure that you have your shield up for that the last thing you want to do is um, maybe Q, E dash in, and then W, and then you get kited out a little bit. They wait out your shield, come back in, and you do not have your shield up for the second engage for their burst rotation. So make sure that they commit at least a part of their burst combo um, when you are using your W, and that will wrap up tip number three. Alright, and jumping into the next tip, I want to talk a little bit about itemization. Now, I'm not going to cover the Arden sensor because I'm pretty sure that Riot is going to take that away from um, Diana and take away from the buff that you get from uh, to yourself with that. Because whenever a support item starts getting used outside of in the other roles, it really starts... Um, to catch their eye and they're going to nerf that. So I'm not going to cover that right now. So there are two different um, schools of thought right now. If you are a really snowball -y player, you feel like you're in a really comfortable matchup and you can just get a lot of early game kills, Electrocute might be the way to go, for example, like I have right here. But what seems to be the more dominant setup is a little bit more bruiser heavy with the co new Conquer is pretty strong. So you can kind of fool around with those uh, couple of different ways uh, to put up those runes if you want um, just kind of my personal personal opinion you can comment down below and I'll give you maybe a setup um, because you're going to change your runes a lot depending on what your matchup is because Diana plays against melee champions mages assassins that I would really change my setup every single time so it'd be kind of useless for me to give you guys just a rune setup right now but the really important thing that I want to talk about is your items and how you need to play out Diana because there are a, quite a few different ways to play her out and I really don't want you guys to get into this pattern of be doing a cookie cutter build every single time and expecting different results. You want to kind of fool around with the different ways you can look to build Diana. If you um, think you need a bit of HP, if there's a bit of true damage and you just want to stack a little bit of HP and uh, just Rod of Ages can be a great item. If you want, if you have a little bit more time in your all-ins and you want to go the Nash's Tooth route, that's great. If you want to go a little bit bursty, get Rabadon, Zonias, if they have a really high impact spell like a fizz or zed alt and then void staff would be a great pick up for when they are very um they are building a bunch of magic resist against you but really try and think of it as a little bit of a thought experiment and look at the enemy comp say they have um a bunch of different champions um that are just super super bursty this is going to be a great time to pick up azonias if you feel like you're just snowballing and killing everyone in like one shot, maybe something like a Lich Bank can be a good idea where you're just um, just throwing yourself in there and you're one-shotting them with your Q, uh, E, W, Auto, um, R combo or something like that. So make sure that you are taking this into full account. I see Tank um, Diana is starting to make a little bit of a resurgence, so you can look into um, items like uh, Leandri's or um, maybe a defensive boot with the ninja tabby when you're behind. So just kind of look to play Diana as more of a flexible pick. She isn't that just like, a, for example, like Jax last season. He had to go Triforce and Shojin in his build, um, and it really limited him quite heavily. So make sure that you are adjusting your build to the game style, and it's going to help you quite a bit. You can um, check out the Discord link down below if you want to talk to me directly, or you can hit that notification bell when I go live on streams to ask me any questions directly on, hey, what should I do in this certain matchup? And I will give you just a general outline. All right, and that will wrap up my tips for itemization. All right, and for the final tip, I'm just going to give something that is going to be pretty effective for Diana, but it also applies to a lot of other assassins and how you look to play them out, and that is the importance of the vision game and vision denial. As she is a melee champion, you want to try and get as close as possible without using um, your gap closers and then using your gap closers when they use their defensives away, say a flash or an E dash or something like that. That is when you want to use your abilities. You don't want to try to close the... Um, 
the all the distance with your E and then get kited out. So make sure that you are looking to always deny as much vision as possible. You should have a high vision score with sweeping out people's vision and setting up bush traps and using your control words to make sure that you are sitting in a safe spot and getting ready to snowball your lead as you are kind of required to get a little bit of strength early in the game because you might get outskilled by some of those extremely strong backline um, damage dealers. So you want to make sure to try and build up a lead early with your ability to have access to solo farm when if you're playing in the mid or maybe, I don't know, if people still play her in the jungle, but she seems like a little bit more of a laner now. So a couple different ways I want you guys to look to set up your vision is first of all in lane, and that is by pushing your... Um, minions all the way up to the enemy towers and then roaming you can if the enemy bottom lane is overextended you can look for a roam there or you can set up a fake roam where you start sitting in this bush making sure it's cleared with the control ward or your oracle lens and as they are usually not going the super safe route around at least not in lower elo you can look to jump on them from the bush and that will be extremely strong next up what you can look to do is when you are in team fights let's just set up an example real quick here so this is a really common place for a lot of late game team fights and this is just going to be a just a little bit of a demo right here how you want to look to approach it whenever you're playing an assassin is in general there are going to be a lot of people that are looking to peel for their backline in solo queue particularly there are so many nautiluses and that is just a really big enemy of melee assassins like diana so you want to try as much as possible to come from unexpected angles now i know i've covered this on quite a few other champions but it is so important for champions like talon like echo like zed like fizz like diana to come from unexpected angles and catch the enemy off guard and attack them where that they are most vulnerable and cause kind of chaos within the fight because the last thing you want as a assassin is to engage in a front to back team fight where you are just trying to shred the enemy tanks um, and then going on the enemy back line so always try and find some um, just kind of paths that are a little bit sneaky a little bit uh, trying to catch them off guard and that will wrap up my final tip guys if you have any questions for me you can hit me up in the comments down below and as always take it easy